Uh, here, I would probably play the 8-9 suited, just so you know. He did 3.5 exit, and he is from Russia, which I know is very scary to Ukrainians. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um... <laughs> I'm sorry, Ukrainians. <laughs> um, so that that definitely does indicate a strong hand, but um, I think a nine suited small blind versus cutoff is just too strong a hand. You can call or you can three bet. Um, I'd probably lean towards calling just because he three and a half exited. it. But if he made it five cents, I'd probably lean towards three betting. Make it like twenty cents. Uh, but yeah, not not folding that. What's the lowest suited? Uh, probably eight seven. Oh, if you open five cents, probably like six five suited. Oh wait, no, that's not true. Sorry, I'm thinking tournaments. Sorry, like okay. seven eight suited. Yeah, yeah. In in tournaments, you got to be a lot wider in those situations because you're getting really good odds with the the blinds and antis. Mm. Uh, but in cash games, you actually do need to be a bit. It's it's such a mind fuck actually playing nine max because my head's still in tournament mode because you never see nine max zoom. Of course, I'm not fucking flying six five suits small black. That's cut off. What am I talking about? Imagine six max cut off versus small black. Cut off versus small black or small black cut off. Yeah, I mean it's the same as nine max. Oh, okay. Yeah, because same yeah, same I thing. Yeah, I've been like three bet with folding. Uh, yeah, that's super fun. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the kind of hands you want, just just this is for Helen. She's asking in six max cash games, what would you what would you flat small blind versus cut off? You can you can flat like ace ten suited, ace jack off, king queen off suit, things like that. Um, yeah, I I personally really like having a, a flatting range small blind versus cut off. I know a lot of people don't. All right, here we're going for a third pot, definitely reasonable. Uh, we're folding him off a bunch of his like Broadway hands, like king queen, king jack, etc. And we could be going for a double barrel. And it's good to go small on the flop if you're planning to barrel the turn for the same reasons I said before. You're keeping in a lot of his weak hands. Um, let's say he has like pocket eights that he'll fold on the turn to a second barrel. So this is the kind of hand we're going to be double barreling a lot. No need. All right, so when this guy checks back, I'm not going to ask you to say what his range is, but what, what do you think we should do here? This is, this is back. Uh, we, we have uh, OEFD, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, um, so ba I, basically, he can either have a spade or he, he can't. You know, he's either got a spade or he doesn't. Um, so we just need to find a size that he's going to fold all of his non spades to. What, what kind of size do you think that would be? Uh, 60%. Yeah, I'd, I'd say even smaller, probably. I don't think people are going to call with like fucking pocket eights with no spade. Um, so I, I think you you can probably bet like five cents, four cents here and get away with it. Bet. Bet. Ah. <laughs> we were so close. <laughs> All right. Now, now we can fire the barrel. We've got the bottom of our... Ah. Alona, <laughs> you're killing me here. <laughs> Brutal. Okay. Oh, and you open queen four suit on the cut. Okay, so this in a tournament is actually fine. Um, but in... Oh, yeah, sorry. I should probably tell you. Opening ranges in tournaments. <laughs> um, it depends on who the... It's only fine if people are folding too much um, in low-stakes tournaments. And generally, people are folding too much from the big blind in low-stakes tournaments. You know, they're not defending fucking, like, queen dues off, which they should be against the min raise. Um, so opening this to tournament is fine. Cash game is nowhere near fine. You can open like queen nine suited. Okay. But again, don't expect you to know that. Is how slow zoom can be still? Two <laughs> <laughs> x. Oh god, yeah, we saw this one before. <laughs> Uh, so here, I I know what happens. We were like Helena and I were watching this just before. We were like, don't do it! Oh god, don't do it! Oh no! Here it comes. Oh no! Ah, she's gonna! Oh my god, she didn't do it! Phew, phew! Oh no, she did it! Oh, sixes! Oh, uh, I mean, nice nice hand, I guess. <laughs> I was thinking of this kind. Of, I was thinking what he can uh, like push 
she can push like ace king, ace queen, like uh, some of, I, I'm thinking about ninth also, ninth or some less pairs. Yeah, I mean, it also, he could also just have like tens, jacks, queens, kings, or aces. You know, you just never know. Um, but so it, it was like 50 something big blinds, and uh, eights just isn't enough to get 50 big blinds in at that spot. Uh, it, <laughs> I, I, would, I would just advise sticking with kind of like normal ranges and don't try and second guess people. Um, don't try and guess what they're going to be shoving there. Uh, but it's, it's not terrible. It's whatever. You, you had a good thought process at least. Would you call it tens, Jackson? Probably not. I'd probably call it Jackson. Yeah, yeah so disciplined. <laughs> All right, so we have a choice. Uh, ju just as a, a little pointer, which uh, I don't know how to reach this in terms of just asking you questions to get you there yourself, but in these situations, especially three-way, when we have a weakish top pair, it's actually a pretty good spot to um, pot control. You know what pot control is? Yeah. Uh, that is, yeah, in this situation, yeah, checking. I mean, I guess in all situations, pot control is checking, but... It's to just keep the pot smaller uh, because we don't have a hand that's going to be able to go for three streets of value. We're not going to be able to, you know, make song cool down with king queen on the flop turn and river. Um, so it's actually a pretty cool spot to just check here and maybe let someone bluff and also underrepresent our hands. So, you know, come across like we have just missed it. Um, and maybe then we can bet the turn and the river for value. But betting's fine. Do whatever you want. I'd probably, again, just let go there, uh, go for a sizing that would get definitely a call from a gut shot. Um, so especially in tournaments, this is, is pretty, pretty good to look out for these situations where someone can have king jack, jack 10, and king 10. And that's, a, that's actually quite a lot of combinations of hands, especially if you start using offsuits for this guy. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to bet a sizing that all of those hands are still going to call. And uh, I'd say probably like 35%, maybe even a bit less would be a good size. Here I'd bluff, but it's not worth talking about. Probably bluff to turn. Would have worked. All right. So, King A8, flush draw. We have the ace of the, that flush draw. What do we do? I uh, move back. Yeah. So this is a dry enough board that we can actually just see that into two people and hope to get a fold. If it's like king nine eight with a flush draw, then we just got to give up because it's just such a wet board. Too many hands that people can have, but it's so hard to have an eight and it's relatively hard to have a king. So having a small, small stab at it when we can have all the strong hands in our range is probably worth it. I would probably actually um, end up betting maybe a tiny bit bigger just to make sure that someone folds something like pocket nines. Mm -hmm. um, so we're probably not going to be double barreling this, hopefully. Uh, I guess we could. But... <laughs> <laughs> I guess it wouldn't be terrible. <laughs> uh, okay, well, in this river, we've got, we've got to keep barreling. Huge. Yes. No, <laughs> it was fine. We'll take it. Okay, snap fold probably had a flush roll. Uh, I'll I'll pause it on more interesting looking hands. So here I like the bet we're protecting our. Oh, okay, yeah, I haven't talked about protection. So apart from getting value, the other the other times you're going to want to bet is for protection, and this hand is very vulnerable. So there's lots of lots of hands that they can have like jack tank and queen etc that have six outs against our hands and they can both have six outs um so have you seen the start of the hand there were some links oh no i didn't see that yeah thanks oh this guy limped okay all right i got you yeah, and is, is it a good like eight cents after one link yeah, it's, so in cash games, that's good. In tournaments, you can actually go smaller um, just because shallower stacks again. So a good rule in cash game is that if you want to raise a limp, and don't always stick to this rule, you can, you can change it um, once you get used to you know, which hands you want to go bigger, which hands you want to go smaller. But a good rule is, let's say there's one limp, then you go to 8x, two limps, you go to 
sorry, eight cents and two limps, you go to 10 cents, three limps, you go to 12 cents, just add on, add on to each time to the, to the three X. Um, but it's, it's not like an exact science. So you can, uh, like if you have aces, you can go a bit smaller. If you have ace king, go a bit bigger, you know, stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, so we're protecting our hand here and going a size that's pretty, pretty small. We might, we might get someone floating with like ace queen of hearts, something like that. But, um, in general, we're pretty happy to get two folds until bang on the turn. How do you say seven in Russian? Sien. Sien. No, she speaks Russian. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> is, you, is Ukrainian a language or is it a dialect of Russian? Uh, Ukrainian is different. Ukrainian language is different to Russian. Oh, do you speak both? Yeah. Oh, cool. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> so embarrassing to be English. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like I spoke some French in grade five. That's cool. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we now have drilled off a full house on the turn. What are your thoughts? What are we going to try and get value from and how are we going to do it? Um, I think we should small, uh, we should bet small and we can uh, get a value from if someone has ace, if someone has uh, a straight draw or already has it. Um, someone can have like five, six, I don't know. Well, I don't know what he could uh, lose. So, yep, no, that's a, that, that's from very true. Any, from any top players, over players. So the one thing that we need to be careful of is that we definitely need to stack an eight. So if someone has an eight, we need to make sure all of the money goes in. Um, but betting small actually does do that. And the reason is that if you bet pretty small here, say let's say like 12 cents, then someone would probably almost definitely raise an eight on the turn. Uh, cause they want to get all the money and against some, some like aces. Um, so yeah, I think betting small would be good. We're still getting value from, um, pocket sixes, maybe pocket fives, maybe something that floated us like Jack 10 suited, maybe ace queen of hearts, something like that. Um, and we might induce a bluff as well. So that, that's another trick to put up your sleeve is that if you have a really strong hand, you don't always have to bet big. You're usually going to bet pretty big. Um, but in certain situations where there isn't much that can call you, Betting small can keep in those weakish hands and it can also make someone think that you're weak. So they might bluff you. Um, and I know you've watched the masterclass, so you already know that the, the term BSTI. Yeah. Sick. It's spreading, man. I've seen people doing it. It's great. No one's done it against me yet. And I'm waiting for it. So yeah, I'd say this is a tiny bit too big, but whatever, you can't really make too many mistakes with the boat. Rats. Fuck, I don't even know what to do. Um, so your thoughts on this one? Um, people, people limp uh, like over fares, mostly like uh, they can limp like aces, like any over pair or like five six probably i don't know what he can call or maybe yeah i i don't think he has aces because i think he, he would he could limp but he might he would then probably raise pre-flop again um over your isolation so i'd say he could have something like tens or nines he could have something like fives or sixes he could have a four maybe uh, maybe like four x of hearts something like that uh he could have seven six although that's unlikely because we have all the sevens and he could sometimes have an eight but it's unlikely because he didn't raise the flop and didn't raise the turn. Um, so against those kind of hands, what kind of size do you think would be good to, to get a call? Um, I think uh, like 80 persons or, or small, small, small. So he can, uh, maybe small is better. So he can uh, raise. Uh, yeah, I, I, so the, the hands that we just spoke about, they're not very strong hands. Um, you know, if he has like pocket fives here or he has pocket nines, uh, it's actually kind of a scary, scary situation for him because there's been so much action beforehand. Um, Helena, what kind of size would you choose? Uh, 15, 20. Uh, I think that's a bit too small. Oh. Yeah. I don't think he's going to be STI too much here because he's usually got showdown value. Um, so I'd probably go for something along the lines of like 40 cents 
um, in these kind of situations. People find it very hard to fold over pairs. So if he has tens or nines, I think they're cool. He might decide to hear a call with, with um, pocket fives. And if he has a four, he'll probably call as well. Whereas he'll probably still just call with a four if, if we bet like 15 cents because we, we can definitely have an eight. Yeah. Four is a real small number, but at least we get to see what he has. Yeah, that's right, Benny. What you got, bitch? Kings. Oh, my God. You know what I was saying about him raising his big pairs? Fuck what I said. I don't know how people play Nymax. <laughs> that is the last hand I would imagine someone's a limit call with. Like, that would be the last hand, I guess. All right. Yeah, 2 and is great. So that this is also something that is worth mentioning for you and for anyone listening out there trying to battle your way through the 2NL streets. This is a very good lesson in learning that no matter how good you are, no matter how well you range your opponents, no matter how accurate you are with your bet sizing, with everything that you do, it could be a down to the point precise surgical operation. There are going to be some people spazzing around. <laughs> and spazzing is probably not a word i should teach you um let's try <laughs> to um, in fact that's definitely not not a kosher, kosher word these days um let's say punting around that is a much more friendly you know what punting is you got to learn the word punting punting is just like throwing throwing your money in a fucking bin it's like setting it on fire just like you know just really having a little punt um they're, they're just going to be doing some real stupid stuff let's call it stupid equity um and that's mean as well jesus it's so hard to, it's so hard to find like a yeah. nice way of describing stupidity good. Good and bad. yeah okay the, the punt punt equity let's call it that splash, splash equity is fine <laughs> yeah, free for equity. anyway so basically it means they can turn up with whatever the, the hell they want because people are playing two and l and they don't really care about losing a few dollars um so it's important to arrange people because most people play relatively sensibly ish um, but at the same time, uh, you always have to keep in the back of your mind. Is this the kind of player that can just turn up with like seven deuce off or fucking limb calling Kings either direction? Uh, this is probably a fault. Hmm. Just so you know, but it's not really worth talking about. And you're very deep stacked and we haven't played too much deep stack before. Trying to make it five. Yeah. Got it. Like eight Have you never played eight? Dude, playing eight Zoom tables is the best. I fucking love it. Uh, so this guy's range is going to be pretty strong. Just worth worth noting when he forexes out the small blinds to isolate, he's probably going to have a pretty pretty nice hand. Um, but we do get to go three way quite often with our hand, so it's definitely a call. Uh, pre pre flop is something I'm not going to focus on too much with you at the moment. Uh, there's there's a lot to go through with cash, and then there's a lot to go through with tournaments. Uh, you you can kind of just I'll I'll find you some cash opening ranges like I've done a video on it. And I'll send you that. So for cash games, you can have it. And then uh, you can just ask me or ask Helen or ask other people how to adjust that for tournaments. Do you have some more? No, I'm fine. Do I need it? I don't know. Use it. I like to just power through in these moments. I don't know why. Just like destroying my vo vocal cords. <laughs> uh, but, uh, Whilst we're waiting, we can do a shout out to Alona's Twitch channel. Whoa, you do Twitch? No way. Twitch streaming sometimes in English, but 99% of the time in Russian? Cool. What's, what's your Twitch channel called? Uh, it's called Koli Aloha. Do you want to try and spell that for the people who can't understand thick Ukrainian accents? What was that? <laughs> do you want to spell that out for people who can't understand your accent? To spell? Uh, spell. Uh, it's like a. Right. Yeah. Let, uh, no, not right. Just like get, say letter by letter. Ah, uh, H O L Y. <laughs> 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 French. 
<laughs> okay, let's let's say H H O L Y. Oh. <laughs> I love how we're just laughing at someone that speaks three languages. Yeah. And we're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't speak ours perfectly. <laughs> All right, H O L Y. H O L Y A O A L O H A. Yeah. Okay, we got it. People can replay that if they want to. If they want. <laughs> I'm sure, some people will want to watch it. Uh, and you, you play, you play tournaments on Twitch. <laughs> Actually, I found out, like, I, I thought that aloha means uh, in Hawaiian language uh, only, like, hello. But I found out it means love on also. Oh, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> aloha. Culturally appropriated it without even, without even knowing it. Mm -hmm. right, definitely call him. <laughs> Loose, it's loose. So uh, let's just assume this guy has like a normal three bet range, mm -hmm. like on, only good hands, uh, which is like aces, kings, queens, ace, king, maybe ace, queen. Uh, we do not beat any of those hands and we're probably not going to win the pot against any of them apart from maybe ace, king. Uh, so I, I think in these situations, we got to just give people credit because especially at these stakes, people tend not to bluff too much mm -hmm. uh, when they're three betting at least. So we're just... Generally, give people credit when they when they're doing that. Just fold the flop. Uh, I, just, I just could understand that the uh, small bird. Uh, I didn't uh, get anything here as well. 